welcome back everyone. Today we're here with Natasha and we're going to talk about human trafficking. So, I'm going to leave it to you to introduce yourself, your name, sure. your pronouns, what you do, mm -hmm. and then we'll get into the question. Okay, <laughs> cool. Hi everyone, um, my name is Natasha. Okay, so my full name is Natasha Shimurai Mukasa. Shimurai is a Shona name um, that my mom gave me. Um, I am a she or her, those are my pronouns, and I'm a qualified development practitioner. I am a human trafficking advocate and I'm an aspiring um, policy analyst and consultant. So that's what I'm working towards now. So what drew you into working in the human trafficking industry? Um, well, I was 17 and I was watching a channel for Daystar and they had, um, okay, so it's a show by, I think it's called James and Betty Robinson. So they talk about different topics there. Mm -hmm. And at the end, a lady by the name of, see, I even remember because it was that, you know, impactful. Mm -hmm. um, a lady by the name Lisa Bavia came on the show and she talked about human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I ever heard of anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and I'm, 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 you know, one of my character traits is I'm full of empathy. So I'm the girl who, if I see someone with no shoes, I'm like, like I want to do something about it, you know. Um, but with this topic, it was different. I, I couldn't sleep that night. Wow. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, another human being, I, doing that to another, I just couldn't get over it. Um, and it's just something that stayed with me and I just knew that I had to do something about it, that I was called to do something about it. Yeah. So that's that's what drew me to that. And how did your love for human trafficking or not necessarily love but like your interest in it really bring you to Cape Town? Like what, what was that draw? Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been following um, an organization called A21 for a while now mm -hmm. and they really inspired me, the work that they were doing and I wanted to learn from them. Um, and I know like in South Africa, like Cape Town is really like the sort of the capital of like that's where most human trafficking happens. Really? So, yes. So it's uh, Cape Town, Durban, and um, Johannesburg. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to go to South Africa, it might as well be, you know, one of those cities and Cape Town, because it's where really like a one one was. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's what mainly drew me to Cape Town. And school, of course, but that's what mainly drew me, yeah. That's crazy. I actually mm -hmm. didn't know that Cape Town was such a huge yeah. spot. spot for yeah. Human trafficking. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Is it mainly through ports or is it like driving? Um, so Cape Town is both a source and a transit, um, source, transit and destination. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So you do have people from, I mean, we've had cases of people from Thailand, girls being brought from Thailand. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they're actually um, shown this really nice hotels and like, okay, so um, you're going to be working at these hotels, you know, either as a dancer mm -hmm. or, you know, just different jobs at the hotel, um, you know, because there's so much poverty in Thailand and people really just want to leave. So they take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're brought here and the moment they're brought here, um, all the identification documents are taken away. Um, and they just realize, okay, this is not what we signed up for. And they're forced to, you know, have sex with men, or it's usually like in the sexual industry, but some as domestic services as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have people from the Eastern Cape who come here looking for greener pastures and can even be their own relatives who say, you know, come, there's a certain job opportunity. Um, but it's not what it is, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's 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 you know different different ways mm -hmm. that it's happening. So you've spoken now about like 
dance is coming, mm -hmm. what is the most like normal job that actually is like the most common in human trafficking? So that gets sourced into basically. Um, so the majority of people are trafficked are women mm -hmm. um, and children. So it, it then translates into sex trafficking. Okay. So um, you know, and I think people really need to understand the difference between sex work and sex trafficking, right? In sex work, a person has made a decision that I'm going to have sex for money and they have an option to leave. Mm -hmm. If I want to leave today, I can leave, you know? But with sex trafficking, you're not allowed to leave and you're not paid or you're paid very little. Mm -hmm. um, and for most of them, they don't have their identity documents. They are with someone. And unfortunately, there's a lot of abuse that goes on into it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really intense. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really, like really heavy stuff. But it's happening. Mm -hmm. That's the, the reality of it is happening. Um, and even if we try to ignore it, because sometimes there are people who are like, oh, I don't want to talk about this topic, or I do not want to um, expose my children or the people mm -hmm. around me to this, but it's happening, it's real, you know? Yeah. So you might as well learn about it so that you don't fall into that trap and the people around you don't as well. So you then believe in like the exposure of education mm -hmm. on this topic? Yes, absolutely. To prevent it happening to kids? Yes. Or to anyone? To really. anyone. Mm -hmm. um, so that leads me more so to ask us like what, how can we identify someone who's being human trafficked? Well, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of different factors, but um, so here's the thing, human trafficking is, it, how can I put it, um, it's in plain sight, yes it's, it's, it's hidden and it's you know, harder to detect and so on, but it's in plain sight, it, um, people are trafficked into industries that we come into contact with on a daily basis, you know, um, I mean just how many, just coming here, how many hotels did I pass, how many lodges did I pass, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and another thing is I want to de debunk the, the myth that it's only women because men are trafficked as well. Um, I know a few years ago, um, just by the ports and camp Camps Bay, um, 50 men were, 50 Filipino men were actually rescued. So, yes, so men are being trafficked as well. So it can be in construction, it can be in farms, it can be, you know, the shipping docks. Um, actually this year, um, A21 rescued a young man who was working fixing phones. So it's something that, it's, it's you know, the, it's the jobs that they do are things that we come into contact with every day. Yeah. And that's why it's important for us to know how to recognize those signs because mm -hmm. um, you never know you can really s save someone mm -hmm. um, so signs are okay for example if they are they don't speak on their own and someone has to answer for them all the time or even if they're they answer but their answers sound rehearsed okay you know yeah. um, and sometimes if they're speaking like a different language um, and and you can tell okay this person doesn't look like they're free um, if um, okay if a person is living with an employer you know that's one of the things and what are their living conditions mm -hmm. um, do they have signs of um, abuse physical abuse can be physical can be sexual um, yeah. I mean, I'd have to think about the other signs, but those are the signs that are there because it's it's mostly that they're not allowed to leave, so their movements are confined. Yeah, okay. their movements are confined, and if it's uh, someone who's going to work, if someone's driving them to work, and you can tell that doesn't look like a family member, but someone drives them to work, someone 
drives them from work. Um, or they leave them at a house where it's like really crammed and overcrowded and you can't really see what's going on. Um, those are definitely, you know, the signs that we can look out for. Thank you. I mean, I think it's really important like when we're not familiar, especially with a certain topic or just a certain anything, and like mm -hmm. we can't identify something that we're not familiar with or that's not that's in our conscious true. sphere. Yeah. Um, so it's good to kind of get the signs out there mm -hmm. um, to make people aware of it. And even if it's a false alarm, I think it's yeah. rather safe than sorry that's in sorry. the end of the day. Exactly. Um, it's about helping people and I mean, you could literally save someone's life Yeah. in the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you were to see something and you think, okay, something's not right, um, you know, because what in South Africa, I'm going to talk about, you know, the South African. So there's a National Human Trafficking Hotline. Okay. So it's um, 0800 222 um, So you just pick up your phone and you call, no charge to you whatsoever. And you just tell them, okay, this is what I saw. Um, Maybe you saw kids begging on the streets, because forced begging is another thing as well, you know. Um, or if you, whatever you saw, to report it. And like you're saying, rather be safe, you know, than sorry. Because you never know, it might save a life, yeah. you know. Um, and it's not really up to you to try and investigate. Just pick up the phone and call the hot and call the hotline mm -hmm. or even if you're not sure if it's human trafficking I mean people you can actually call and say hey um, so this is happening is this human trafficking okay. and they'll be more than happy to explain it to you that okay no this is not trafficking this is this and then um, you fear you to you know the organization that can help you and so mm -hmm. on so yeah it, it it definitely is important to have that number and to be that responsibility mm -hmm. to call them. thank you yeah. i'll leave the number down in the description box down below what is the biggest issue that you're currently facing in your job um i think that um well m my heart really goes out to you and there's just an alarming growth of online child exploitation like it's mm -hmm. just huge it, it keeps on growing and it's just really alarming and you find that a lot of parents have no idea what their children are doing on social media so that is really like a huge problem mm -hmm. um, because there are just so many applications and kids are chatting to people they don't know online um, so I think that that is something that um, I've been focusing a lot on um, when it comes to just fighting human trafficking. So how does child exploitation link to human trafficking? So um, traffickers have uh, actually going online now because that's where the world is, mm -hmm. that's where the world is going. So they can send friend requests, they can inbox, you know, a minor. And um, there's actually a study that was done to show that they use certain hashtags to search for potential victims. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if, you know, a child is posting things like hashtag home alone, hashtag lonely, hashtag depressed. So they take that as an opportunity mm -hmm. to groom your line. So grooming is when someone, you know, you're talking to someone, a stranger, and they make you trust them, yeah. you know. So they see, okay, huh, this person is, you know, they have emotional problems, oh, this kid is alone. Um, and they just take a chance and they're very patient. Like, they will talk to you, they will make you trust them. And, yeah, and, and, you know how parents can tell sometimes kids will start being secretive but then the thing is not a lot of parents are with their kids at home or checking how was your day what's going on mm -hmm. you know for them to see that or notice that but kids will then start being very secretive um, and so it can then lead to the traffic is saying um, okay so let's meet you know and from there um, 
the child can be gone, you know, or they can ask the child to send them pictures of themselves, okay. you know, nude pictures, and they can sell that online. Um, so yeah, that's that's how it's happening. So parents need to be very careful um, with that. I think it's such a relevant thing because we're so like absorbed in such a digital age mm -hmm. um, now that, as you mentioned earlier, it's like that everything is online. Yeah, um, we're so accustomed to being online to have our life online we don't feel weird with exposing intimate parts of our life online exactly. so it makes it easy for mm -hmm. predators and to, to, yeah. be able to kind of like infiltrate your life so it's true um and you know in one of the when i was talking to a school i say to them um do you guys um like do you have like your name out in your bag and they laughed this is like great sevens they're like that's like who does that, you know? Because I was like, do you have like your name and your address on? on? It's like no, like who does? But I'm like, oh, then why? It's just the the only difference is that it's now online, mm -hmm. you know. But online we put out so much personal information, and there are predators there, yeah. you know. So we need to be careful and to learn um, how to not just have your privacy certain, mm -hmm. just so that you're not. Um, you don't pray, you don't fall prey to the yeah. traffickers, yeah. Thank you. I yeah. think that's really important, um, just with how like exposed we are mm -hmm. as a generation yeah. for just like being online. It is quite scary how much information we divulge. And if you want to learn a little bit more about like the implications of social media and kind of like the dark side of it and you, what happens really with your information mm -hmm. and how you engage please watch the documentary social dilemma it's on netflix i will also leave the trailer to it down below for you guys to check out just to understand really the the tech part the tech side mm -hmm. of like social media and then this is also a great way of understanding it's like why you should yeah like care about what you're putting out online these yeah. two resources yeah. really this video and then the documentary link down below will really give you a clear understanding as to why you should be cautious about what you put out online because it is there for anyone One, to get a hold of. And and now when you're looking for a job, because that's the world that we live in, they are going to check yeah. your social media activity. So you need to be aware of what you're posting because what you posted like two years ago can make you actually not get the job or the scholarship that you want so it's it's it is very important mm -hmm. just think about it um who is you know anyone can see am i comfortable with you know the people that i respect the most seeing this mm -hmm. if you're not then don't post it exactly yeah i understand agree my dad just rolled up so what has been your biggest success in your career so far I think mean, it's a hard one because I'm in the beginning of my career, but um, I think it's been so powerful to, you know, after an awareness event and then getting feedback like weeks later where someone, like I remember this, um, this brother and sister at school and we had done an awareness event in human trafficking and we got feedback that um, they actually their dad was going for an interview and they shared with them what you know they taught them what human trafficking is and when they researched on you know the where the place was so it's just an industrial site like the office didn't exist you know and so they didn't go because of that so just stories like that um where you do an awareness event and people share and you know take action it, it's just been really powerful for me, wow. you know. Yeah. That's actually kind of crazy mm -hmm. how like kids are taking action yeah. for not just themselves but like their the their loved ones. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how you almost like through your awareness campaigns you're giving empowerment to people of all ages. Yeah. Not just through awareness but like educating them and like giving them the capabilities and just like the skill sets to like make a huge change in their life and in their like loved ones' lives. Yeah. So what is your personal goal of what you're doing right now? 
Um, so my personal goal, um, which is also I think a trait of one's goal, mm -hmm. uh, it, it convicted me, and I have a conviction myself, um, and it's to end modern slavery everywhere, whatever. Um, it has been very important for me to have that conviction that it is possible, mm -hmm. that we can end it. Um, and it's been important to keep that conviction and that goal in front of me because it can get hard when you hear the stories or when you don't get the out outcome that you expect. Um, it can be really heartbreaking and really emotionally taxing. So having that goal in front of me and saying, no, this can be done, you know, has it has been very important for me. Yeah. So how do you protect yourself from situations that don't work out the way you did, mm -hmm. that you thought it would? Like how do you protect your own mental health from all of these? Um, well, the great thing about it is, uh, you know, the environment that I'm in, the people are, you know, you can just have a deep briefing. Like if it's just like, if it's just too intense, mm -hmm. like you can just literally just go and say, okay, <laughs> this is really intense and I really need to center right now, I really need just to pour this out. Um, and it's just important also, I think, just to have a counselor, you know, a psychologist that you can go and see and just like really talk about it. Because it, it is real stuff and it mm -hmm. is heavy stuff. Um, and just like I'm saying, the people that you know that I I, I'm, I work with or I'm around with, they're just really amazing people, um, and it just makes it all worthwhile and easier to to manage when it gets like really 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 hard. That's good. Yeah, it's the whole sense of like community mm -hmm. in the end of the day. Exactly. So that's how we started. We started with small communities. Yeah. Um, and that's how we've always known life to be and like that's what's cultivated our strength mm -hmm. so it's beautiful to know that you have a support system yeah. and it's also people who understand you because they're in the same industry same. Exactly. so it's not people that are like you're kind of just like pouring out everything and then they get overwhelmed as mm -hmm. well it's actually people who can manage and balance also that same energy that you're giving off yeah which is so important yeah. 40.3 million people are enslaved right now mm -hmm. what do you feel like are your daily actions that you take to help stop it um so you know with my volunteer work at age 21 um mm -hmm. where we do presentations, we go into schools, we go into communities, um, you know, just to have that awareness and to train people and to prevent them from becoming victims. Mm -hmm. um, also on the hotline, so when you call on one of the people who picks up the phone, um, you know, in case management, um, but also just, you know, small things like sharing on social media it's actually powerful like just to reshare a post um, and just having that conversation going around with the people um, that i that you know i meet and i see um, i was i was at the doctor um, on friday and just had that conversation as well because a lot of victims actually do go to the doctor um, and it's important for the doctors to be aware of what to look at, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so just having that conversation, you know, in the daily space, yeah. That's really yeah. important. Yeah. But has now working in human trafficking given you any fears of your life? Like, do you have now, out of like the norm of like the dark, <laughs> do you have now any fears that's come with the job? I would say yes and no. Um, I mean, I'd say yes in the sense that you just get to just see how this world is and how it. I mean, just things like sometimes um, someone goes into a crowd with someone that they know, and they're then taken to different locations, and you know, just things like that. Um, you apply for a job. 
you know, and it's not what you expect. So, but then, no, in the sense that um, I'm fueled by hope, you know, I'm fueled by hope for the victims that I rescued, the victim that I to be rescued. I'm fueled by the hope of preventing the young lives into into that. So, no, I'd say more more than anything, it has. Like I just have this this burning fire, this hope on the inside that we can do this. Like modern slavery can be ended, mm -hmm. you know. We just need everyone in the boat, you know, and it's possible. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is possible. Sounds amazing. Yeah. I think it's like I said, it's like that hope that keeps you driving, mm -hmm. which means yeah. all of the previous success accumulates to something, which yeah. means there is only success for the future um that's amazing yeah. i'm so happy because i feel like no matter what you do in life you're going to be fearful of something and to kind of have that counter argument in your brain to be like yes i see the fear and i acknowledge it mm -hmm. but look at all of this greatness that's come yeah, from, from it that. at the same time so i'm really happy for you <laughs> I actually have this quote that um, I think has been helping me as well. It says, the brave may not live forever, but the cautious never live at all, you know. Um, if you're just on the sidelines, you're just cautious. I mean, just just be brave. Just go for it. Just dive in, you know. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. So how do you see that quote kind of like relating to you? Um, well, I think, you know, like I was 17 and when I shared it with the people around me, they're like, oh my gosh, don't even get involved in that. That is dangerous stuff. Um, and, you know, just, you know, sometimes, you know, when you share it, it's like, that is, that is, that is dangerous. Like, why are you doing that, you know? Um, and just in my daily life, like, you just have to be brave because fear will always be there. Mm -hmm. You know, you if you wait for fear to go and you do something you won't just do it afraid mm -hmm. and that has really helped me and brought me to the place where I am um, just taking the step in spite of the fear mm -hmm. yeah but what do you recommend for people to do who don't have the money to donate to help fight human trafficking well you can volunteer mm -hmm. um, your time you can what does volunteering your time look like like well, do do? it it depends, I guess, with um, individual because there, I mean, there are a lot of organizations um, just in South Africa just that fight human trafficking. Um, so I think if, if if you do feel like you have time to volunteer, you can research or contact them and say, hey, I'm interested in volunteering. What does it look like? Because every single organization has, um, you know, their own requirements and their own way of doing it mm -hmm. um, but H21 if you go on their website they have loads of resources and they are targeted at different people mm -hmm. so you have um, a student guide um, so if you're a student you can go on a21.org um, slash ed education and then you can download their student guide. Mm -hmm. Then you can keep it for yourself and you can distribute it to other students as well. There's an educator's guide. If you're a teacher, you can download that and share that with other teachers as well. Um, there's parents guide for parents. Like we spoke about how important it is for parents to know this mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that's making, you know, um, child exploitation thrive is the parents um, that they're they don't know what's happening yeah you know mm -hmm. um, so if you're a parent you can download the, the parent guides and share it with other parents um, and like they list a whole all different ways that how, how you can make a difference um, there are campaigns that are there that are running that you can be a part of um, you can request for a speaker to come and share yeah, human trafficking. And 
it's really, really important to share the hotline with people around you because the more the reports, the more victims are identified and rescued. It's so heartbreaking, but um, the statistics say that 1% of victims are rescued. Just 1% wow. of victims. That's very heartbreaking. So that's why, like, literally everywhere I'm going, I'm just like, the hotline people, this is the hotline number, because it's important, you know. And, and like I said, you don't have to be sure that it's human trafficking. Just report it. Mm -hmm. If you feel like something's not right, just report it. Um, if you're going for a job interview and um, you don't know, you're not sure if it's safe, you know, you can call the hotline and they can help you on how to verify if it's a if it's a good job opportunity, you know. Um, so yeah, you you can do that, you can I don't know if I mentioned sharing on social media just what you have. What campaigns have you been involved in? Um, and can you just talk a little bit more about them and kind of like the outcomes and how mm -hmm. you felt doing them? Um well started back home in Zim. Um, I ran a conveyor code Hastelin, but then the lockdown happened, so we then had to move it online. But it was, um, it was basically awareness, you know, and it was, it was crazy just how many people had no idea, mm -hmm. you know, what human trafficking is. Um, and you'd have, you know, people say things like, Oh yeah, you know, it happens overseas. No, it's happening right here, mm -hmm. you know, right where you are. Um, you can drive past a place every day and it's happening there. Like it can happen next door, you know, that's how real it is. Mm -hmm. um, and they would think the movie taken, but <laughs> um, people have this idea that it's, you know, it's just kidnapping. People are kidnapped, but you can be trafficked or brought into that situation by people that you know. I mean, people have been sold by their own families, you know, their own parents, their own um, cousin, their own friend, um, and it's, you know, job opportunities. And again, I don't fear because they're great opportunities out there, but it's about you being empowered mm -hmm. to be able to recognize that mm, something is not right here, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to just give a hotline and call and say, okay, I have this interview here, I look this place up, I'm not sure about this, or um, this employer is asking for money, or just, um, okay, the salary really looks too good to be true, you know, things like that. Um, so it's just about empowering people and for me it, I was like, okay, there's so much to do, you know, there's so much to do. Um, and then here in South Africa, um, I was recently part of Walk for Freedom campaign mm -hmm. um, and it's a global event where millions of people walk um, and it's just, just it's so good, you know restrictions you know lessened and we could have it um, but of course there's social distancing and that's how the world has been anyway it's like you stand like a meter apart it's a silent walk um, and it's to raise awareness um, and it was amazing to be part of it because in recent years I think I just see it on social media and wasn't able to be part of it but it was a blessing and honor to be part of it and to actually you know be part of the organizing um, committee and you know the outcomes a lot of people have because they made noise the people that came made noise and we've just been talking about it and posting about it. We're still seeing the impact of what it did. Mm -hmm. um, people want to know more about it. People are calling more. People want to be involved. You know, the question that you ask, how can I be involved? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking that question. So, yeah, I'm grateful for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you mentioned the movie Taken, which 
Yeah. I, I, I started traveling quite young and my yeah. dad made me watch it before I traveled the very first time overseas yeah. alone. Um, which I'm very grateful for because it made me very aware mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. and like how things happen. But as you mentioned, it is a very like one-sided view, like it's only like the kid the kidnapping part. part. Yeah. Do you have any other movies or documentaries that you could recommend maybe to people that are very good? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we were talking about Can You See Me? <laughs> yeah. So there's um, Can You See Me? So it's, Can You See Me is actually made from real um, survivor stories. Mm -hmm. So it's things that really did happen. Um, so it just makes you more aware of mm -hmm. what's actually happening. Um, I know a, an organization called Exodus Cry. They have like really good documentaries um, on like the realities of human trafficking. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Also leave both of them down below so that you guys can check them out. Um, just for like education and all yeah. of that. Um, it's also always just so much better just to educate yourself in a way that you're comfortable. If you're more comfortable reading, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have any books to recommend. Um, I mean, I'll I'll have to like send it to you and then maybe get the cool. description. But I know there's a book by a survivor that okay. she wrote, um, and it's important that you mention that because um, the videos can be very triggering. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're a sensitive viewer, I would suggest that you do not watch them because it's really heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so then the guides would be the best option mm -hmm. where you can read and it's more about empowering you um, on what you can do in the next step. So yeah, if you're a sensitive viewer, absolutely the videos would be traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was mentioning is like finding a method that is digestible to yourself really is really important so mm -hmm. we'll leave a couple of resources down below mm -hmm. um, that you can check out mm -hmm. um, and really just figure out what you're comfortable with don't feel any shame or guilt for not being able to digest something yeah. when it is it is a reality and we understand but you also have to take yourself and your own mental health into awareness and into consideration into this own equation um, take it as slowly as you can um, but I do think that this video is a really amazing first step just really kind of like engaging with the content a little bit more yeah. but also leave some links to your account so that people can maybe also engage with you or connect with you yeah, sure. Um, sure. with regards to this um, but yeah, yeah that will all be in the description box <laughs> let's see if there's anything else I don't remember yes the December documentary. Oh yeah. Um, so um, I can't say I cannot say much of about course. it. Um, We're it's all looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's something that I've just been seeing online, and I actually have not had the time yet to fully read what it's all about mm -hmm. and, and stuff. But what I will say is that um, be part of it. You know. Um, so will you be wearing a dress you, the whole of December? I, I will have to see if I can commit to that. <laughs> I will have to see if I can this commit is warm to here. that. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'll definitely say that if you find a campaign that you can be a part of, to be a part of it, because mm -hmm. we do need you in this fight of human trafficking. Um, I think a lot of people, um, when they hear about it, and they're like, oh, well done, and they clap in hands for you. They're like, oh, go Natasha, oh, go, you know, h one go Exodus Cry, go. But it's you, the people, that make it happen, Yeah. you know. Um, it's you who, who's, who shares the information with your neighbor. There's some people that I can never reach, that you can reach, mm -hmm. you know. And when you give them that information, you can really save their life. Mm -hmm. um, and like I say, just calling on the hotline. Mm -hmm. You know, you never know um, who can be helped and who, and who will be rescued. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say that if you find a campaign that fights human trafficking, please do be a part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For the end of the video, will you just repeat the hotline? Uh, sure. Um, so the hotline is 0800 222 777. Or you can even send an email at 
info at 0800-222-777.org.za. Yeah. Thank you. As I said prior, um, everything will be in the description box yeah, down below. Absolutely. But thank you so much for watching this video. It was yes. absolutely lovely to have you here to talk about thank this. You. Thank you for having me. Of course. I think it's an important topic to be spoken yeah. about. Um, I learned so much. I hope you guys learned a lot as well. But until next time, bye!